Hello and welcome back to the Off Grid family. Today I'm going to be starting a new series on how to look after stick insects. Now a lot of you will be like, well how is that going to help in any off grid kind of environment? But we actually sell our stick insect eggs locally and online and it doesn't get a large amount of money but with everything a little bit better than nothing but they take very little looking after. So you can actually get quite a high yield of stick insect eggs from a very, very low amount of energy. And the majority of the things they eat will be growing as weeds around you anyway. So it just works out to be an extremely good, easy way to make a little bit of extra cash. I'm going to start off with the substrate, what they like to have as their flooring which is sphagnum moss and we buy this from off the internet but you can use soil, you can use leaves, you can use pretty much anything but I'll show you how to deal with the sphagnum moss first and go from there. Thanks for watching, let's get on with it. Sphagnum moss often comes dehydrated in little cubes like this and all you need to do is add water to it. They're often quite simple and it's often got all what you need to know on the back but for this one you need to add a quarter of a litre of water and this will make a litre of sphagnum moss. You add your cubes of moss and now add your quarter of a pint, a uh, quarter of a litre of water. It works out to be just under half a pint. Now you could just leave the blocks and they'd slowly absorb the water and expand but I like to first off get them all wet in the water so mix them around and then just with a fork start to break them up. They'll get easier and easier and as you can see they're already expanding at quite a rate. Sphagnum moss can be used for all sorts of things, it's a good place of soil. Um, you can actually add it to plants that need soil but add it at the bottom so it, it absorbs a lot of moisture for it. And then um, your plant pots are lighter and it will absorb more water so that it will slowly feed your plant oats. You know, if you're going on holiday, put in some of this in the bottom of your plant pots. We'll just keep the water there for longer so it can suck up the water as it's needed. Now, as you'll see, there is no more water left, but we're slightly under. I need to add a little bit more water. Sometimes happens, there's not always the exact amount, so I'll add a little bit more water to it. I'm adding about 100 millilitres more. The fork just allows you to be able to separate it all out a bit better. And as you can see, this is why they end up dehydrating and then packing it up tightly. Because imagine the price of sending this compared to the tiny little packet you saw before. Now I like to just go around breaking all the last bits up. Closest thing I can say this is like to is mixing up um, stuffing. There you go, done. Now as I say this will be a perfect substrate for stick insects. It's good for snakes. We've had our snake in it for a while as well. Uh, it allows the um, heat mat underneath the snake to um, heat up the actual moisture in this and it actually keeps our little snake a little bit warmer than it would without it because the water and the, the moss tend to keep the heat for longer. Okay, that's done. Now to put it in the tank with the stick insects.
you're now looking at the main food we feed our stick insects, which is brambles. So I'm going to cut a few of these back and take them home with me. Okay, so we've got the sphagnum moss, and it's still quite damp, it's quite nice, it's actually quite nice to play with, and I particularly like the smell of it, but my wife absolutely hates it, so it's probably just me being a freak. But what we need to do now is we just need to put a layer of it in the bottom of our um, the, the container we're going to be putting them in. Now I'll tell you one problem with using sphagnum moss of any kind, well a moss of any kind is, when they start to lay eggs it can be quite a challenge to find them. But we found it's the best substrate for them. They, um, the, the food we put in which is brambles lasts the longest because of how much water is reta retained by the moss. I'm going to give it another spray. All the moisture will drop to the bottom of the moss eventually, but that's where we want it because then we've got our brambles will be poking into it and it just keeps them alive a little longer. Now unfortunately I picked these yesterday and they've already started to wilt. Now I have um, had them in water, but I need to, um, normally I would cut them and get them straight in. With something like this, just like with flowers, before you put them in the moss, snip off the end at like a 45 degree angle, in fact I'm going to go below that, there we go. And then you want to just bury it in the moss a little bit. Next piece. Now, um, one thing, we always just go picking this either on the way back from school or we take, you know, take the kids on a little walk and then that's what we, you know, that's the reason we've gone on the walk, um, to just collect bits of brambles and they're, they're relatively, they're everywhere basically, but during some months they're more scarce than others. There are other things you can feed them um, and I might do a video on that soon, but um, you know, it's, it's one of the easiest things to get and what you do is once it's once they've eaten all the leaves, pull it out, making very sure none are on it and um, just change it. But remember, they are stick insects, so they, they are very good at hiding, especially on sticks, believe it or not. Oh, that worked. Due to all the little thorns on them, they are like Velcro, so just, you know, once you get them stuck in there, try not to tangle everything up. Ow. I would advise wearing gloves when doing this, but I'm a glutton for punishment, so I don't tend to. And unlike me, I'd start with the smallest ones first and then work your way up, but I've just gone all hell for leather putting any ones in wherever. Okay, once they're put in, you want to give them another spray. And then that just means that there's moisture on the leaves for the stick insects to actually um, basically get their moisture from. They get it from the actual leaves. There you go. Um, one thing, if you've got any variety of flying stick insects, which um, the male of the species we have does fly, don't spray directly into the tank because it actually rots their wings. Their wings start to die. Uh, basically, almost like it moulds, it doesn't, but it, it, that's the closest thing I can mention to it. So then suddenly they're a bit deformed. Now one beautiful thing about these stick insects is as they shed their skin, their def deformations go away. So if they've lost a leg, they'll um, they'll shed their skin and they've got their leg back. But not um, not once they become an adult. Once they become an adult, that's it. They you know they're, they're stuck with what they got, like a slot really. So that's that sorted. Now I've got to move the stick insects back into their house. The easiest way we found to do this is using just leaves of um, 
leaves of the brambles. You, you pick them up on the leaf because they're quite happy to go onto it and you place them in. The reason we started looking after stick insects was primarily because my son really wanted some stick insects. He'd seen it on something and we were like, okay, fair enough, not a problem. Um, I got vague memories of a friend down the street having large quantities of different exotic animals and he had stick insects and I'd always wanted some. We did find a lot of people were after the eggs and there's not an amazing amount of sellers out there that will sell the eggs. Now, the eggs take about eight months to hatch, but with something like this moss, you don't see them when they've first gone down and suddenly you'll find there's a little baby nymph in there just crawling around and that's when they'll start, you know, hatching the first batch. Now here I've got two, um, I've got this which is covered in eggs. I'll show you a close-up of it for, in a minute. But care for the eggs I'll do in a second and I'll t talk you through all of that. But what we do is we place the eggs back in with them but we make sure that they're on something that's visible so we can actually keep them wet. I'll explain all about that in a second. Okay, so these are the eggs. They're a pointy, blacky, yellowy, grey kind of colour. Let me zoom in on this one. Okay, so this is the eggs. They go through a different a colour change as they go through their life cycle. Like, if you have a look at this one, quite different colours. Um, as far as we've noticed, they don't represent anything. So like, this one will stay this colour for longer than this one, for example, but that doesn't mean one will be a male or one will be a female. I might be incorrect. We've got them separated out. This is because my wife, being an amazing woman she is, has separated out the ones that have hatched. And as you'll see, there is a difference to these ones. Um, let me go and get another one that hasn't hatched yet. Okay, there's this one, and as you'll see, Tiny little plug, I'm trying to be as gentle as I can with it. A tiny little plug at the end here. Okay, so let me move that one back. Very gentle. And then these ones are empty and thus have no plugs on them. Look, they're completely hollow. Let me try and get one without crushing it. So they're now very, very brittle. As you can see, look, it's completely hollow in there. I'll see if I can zoom further into that one, but I'm not sure if I can. Okay, so that's the best I can do. The autofocus on this new camera is quite rubbish. There we go. But as you can clearly see, there's no little plug inside it. It's been emptied out. Okay, the way you keep these eggs, you need to keep them wet, not soaking. But put them on a paper towel or something like that and spray them. And that is pretty much all you have to do. The one thing you have to pay attention to though is mould growth. If it starts to grow mould, that is the one thing that will kill these eggs. They're very, very robust. But if you um, let them get too mouldy, they will just die. The way to defeat that is if they start going slightly mouldy, don't water them. Let them completely dry out again, so like the paper towel dries out and then spray it again and that, you know that should have killed the mold and it's not you know not life altering for the eggs but what we do is once we've done a full clean out like we have now we'll put this whole um paper towel back inside the tank with them and just spray it with them so that if any new nymphs are born they've got readily access straight away to food um, because what we used to have them in a hatching tank separ separated, but you just don't you don't always notice them, even if you check all the time. Because as I say, it can take eight months or more for them to hatch, and if you don't notice them, within a couple of days they'll die. So we've just started putting them straight in the tank with the rest of them. As I said before, don't give up on these eggs. Um, we have a tank where we transfer our stick insects to when we're cleaning them out. And we've just recently had a new batch born, so we did a full clean out. But we hadn't used the this, clean, this tank for probably, well, at least five months, maybe even more. And we were just sorting out a few things, and suddenly I noticed there was a little baby nymph in there. So um, we quickly exchanged him back into the main tank, and that was fine. But as I say, they just, they are such a robust thing. Obviously, because we didn't know the egg was in there, it had not been watered at all. And when it was born, it was, it was fit and healthy. We put it straight into the other tank and he's, he's playing with his friends now. 
So basically, the only thing you need to know is spray them with water whenever they start to dry out. If they start to go mouldy, just let them dry out, you know, the towel to dry out completely and then water them again. And just stay on it. They will hatch eventually. Okay, so I need to spray these now and then they can go into the tank and then we'll start moving across the other stick insects back into their new clean house. And you only need to give them enough of a spray to make sure that the actual um, paper towel is wet enough. That's it, no more than that. And just make sure you do spray it. As soon as it starts to dry out, spray it again. One other thing I forgot to mention is the reason we've actually left these here, um, the hatched ones, is it just means that um, later on we can count up how many have hatched and we know how many to look for because, as I say, they're stick insects. They eat brambles and leave sticks. It's very easy to um, not notice one hanging onto a branch, so you, it's always easier just to know exactly how many you've got in there. At, you know, even a rough estimate's better than nothing. Oh no, not on my arm. This way, we'll just come on. That's it. Come on, in you go. No, don't you climb on me too. There's always one that won't, doesn't want to go home. There we go, a nice yummy leaf, come on. I'm putting them back, try not to get them like overcrowd the leaves. So try and put them on individual leaves out of each other's way. Come on. That's it. There they are in their nice new home. One's already trying to escape down here. Um, now, what I would suggest is getting a piece, a pair of tights or nylons or whatever, pantyhose in America, and place that along the top and then whatever lid you're going to use. And it just means that they can hang on and shed their skin from there. They can, they'll do it from the branches anyway, but it just gives them more of an option, if you've got it, that is. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. It was very basic, you know, some step by step, some just like brushed over what we had to do. But it was time we had to clean the tank out and I thought some people might want to know. As I said at the beginning, it's not large quantities of cash from doing this. You have to do it because you love it. Um, because we've got kids, it's brilliant because it's quite educational and they've enjoyed caring for them as well. Um, but as I say, you can sell them online and you can make a few pounds. Anyway, if you've got any questions or if you'd like to see any more in this kind of, of this kind of nature, then just give us a shout. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you again soon. Bye.